Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I have a Raid in the Rat video for you because I was out and I got myself a beautiful plant, a type of plant that I've actually never had in my collection before and that is the beautiful plant next to me here. This plant is called Vresia splendens and commonly it's known as the flaming sword bromelia. There are thousands of different kinds of bromeliads to be found. So at the moment I'm sitting out in my garden here because I had actually already filmed this video and I forgot to put my new microphone on and there was no sound to the footage. So I've decided that I'm going to use some of that footage that I had originally when I do close-ups of the plant and so forth and then the rest I am going to film out in my garden here because before I did it indoors, packed everything away and I decided it's such a lovely sunny day out here. It's 8 degrees Celsius at the moment and well, perfect to be outside and make a quick video like this. So I just want to show you this plant closer up from my earlier footage so you can see all around and how beautiful this plant is. But we'll see if we can get some footage outside too. There we go. Isn't it amazing? But even out here in the garden, this plant looks beautiful, right? Oh, and it's enjoying this sunshine, I'm sure. It's very warm, even though it's the middle of March. <laughs> So here I have some of my earlier footage from the indoors just to make sure that you can see this plant clearly because it is absolutely beautiful. Look at the colorations on these leaves. The green, the dark black color on these leaves and the patterning, they're so amazing. And then this flower spike with this amazing striking bright orange color, wow. And to think that they last for months on end, that is just amazing. What a beautiful plant. And to think that there are so many combinations and colours to be found out there. And you can see as a point here, the little cup in the middle of the leaves where the plant collects water. And they are just so amazing. And they are found in so many different sizes from minute plants. Again, another cup here to huge plants out in nature. And they are becoming quite popular as house plants around the world as well. So the first thing I want to talk about with this plant is the absolutely splendid colors it has. The leaves have this kind of animalistic patterning on them. So they're variegated and they're kind of black and green and splotchy and stripy. So, so gorgeous to look at. And then you have these dark orange red flower spikes here that are just amazing and they will stay on the plant anything between a month and four months or something like that so you'll have these on your plant for quite a long time which is absolutely wonderful because when these flower spikes start to die back then the mother plant will also start to die back so all the leaves will fade away on these plants and in this pot I have three plants together, three smaller plants giving me three flower spikes and they look absolutely wonderful. So when the plant starts to die back, don't worry that you've done anything wrong. This is the natural process of a bromeliad. In the wild, they do this and you can't stop it. So you will enjoy this plant like this for a couple of months and then it will produce you pups and that's the exciting part. So around the edge on some varieties there will be pups and some get their pups coming up out of the middle of the plant and when they've got to a decent size that you think you can take them off the mother plant then you can go and prune them off with some sterile clean scissors or a knife and pop them up again in another pot. Usually when they're around six inches or so then they're ready to go on and be a new plant. So it's a natural process and it's inevitable. It's going to happen to everybody who has bromeliads. So it's not you and your fingers not being green. <laughs> now, going back to this plant being epiphytic, that means it attaches itself, as I said, to plants and rocks and so forth. It actually collects its moisture from the air and the leaves can absorb moisture on this plant. 
So they all have a rosette shape. And in the middle, there's what I call a cup. Some people call it a tank. Some people call it a vase or a vase or a trough or anything. It's just a holder for water. So I will keep calling it a cup. You can fill that cup up indoors to about a quarter of the way up and keep moisture in there. And that will help the plant to be able to absorb moisture into its system. At the same time, you don't want old stagnant water sitting in these cups here for too long so every one or two months I would suggest tipping out whatever water you have in there rinsing them out and then filling up with fresh water because you will get debris and all sorts of things falling into this cup with the water as well and if you think about these plants in the wild that is how they get their fertilizer so they'll be up in the trees and any plants above will drop down leaves and all sorts of stuff and that will become a kind of fertilizer mix in the water that the plant absorbs. So it's a really clever way of the plant fertilizing itself and watering itself. So that being said, this plant does like to be sprayed over a couple of times a week, keeping the leaves nice and clean but also so that the plant can absorb the water into its leaves. Fertilizing a plant like this as a house plant, you don't need to do very often. I would say probably once or maybe twice in the summer months and only a very small amount. And you need to get a fertilizer that is specifically for bromeliads or you can use an orchid fertilizer. So if you think of this plant in the same kind of way as an orchid that also only needs a small amount of fertilizer and it needs to be able to drain away from the plant as well so that it's not sitting with, especially in these cups, any kind of fertilizer that has too much salt because that is just going to burn out the plant and it will be detrimental. The soil substrate around the bottom of the plant, you can use cocoa coir, you can use some kind of mosses and a good thing is orchid bark and you can mix that with the other things that I just said. As long as the soil base or the substrate is aerating and moisture liquid can run through. This plant should not be sitting in water for any amount of time because it will quickly rot out. But conversely, it does like to stay moist. And that is why filling up the cups here is good, spraying over the plant is good, and every now and then watering the soil. But if it's in a plastic pot like this is with the catch pole, you really need to be careful with that and also with the amount of light that the plant is getting. These plants love bright indirect light. They can take bright direct light as long as it's not burning hot. Otherwise the leaves will burn out and brown off and crisp away. So that also needs to be taken into consideration. This particular variety I have with me here can take a lower light condition, but that doesn't mean that it can stay in a low light condition for a very long period of time the coloration will kind of start to fade away and it won't be as healthy and it will probably rot out with too much moisture in and around it. So if you want to get these strong striking colors, you need to give these plants as much bright indirect light as possible. They really, really love that. When it comes to the temperature for this plant as a house plant, they do very well with normal home temperatures that you enjoy yourself. So not too cold or not too hot, but the most important thing to remember is that these plants do like humidity not meaning that you have to have them humid around them all the time but if you have these plants on a shelf or a windowsill above a radiator for example and the hot dry air is coming up that is going to quickly dry out your plant and it will suffer from that so keep it in an area in the home where there is a kind of level temperature and a normal humidity to a higher humidity if you have any kind of room or situation with other plants that like humid environments this plant will do very well with those for sure just don't let it be anywhere where it's drafty and cold or as i said too hot and dry air coming from any kind of heating system another great thing about this plant is that it is pet friendly it's not poisonous so that if your dog or cats or any other kind of animal goes and nibbles on them a little bit that they're going to be harmed by this plant they won't but of course if your pet should go and eat the whole plant down then they could get a bad stomach from that but that would happen to anyone overeating too much of anything so it's not a poisonous plant it's not dangerous to have around your pets 
but it would give them an upset stomach if they eat too much so be very careful with that but i am basically just so excited to give this plant a chance i've never tried having a bromeliad before and i want to see if it works out in my home so i'm going to test with this one i will see how long i get to keep the flower spikes i will see if the pups come up so that i can get me some new ones and then i will see how i carry on and if it goes well then i'll be getting me some more because i think they're really beautiful plants so many colors and varieties it's unbelievable and i've seen so many wonderful videos and photos of people that have these out in the environments where they live some places they are prolific with plants like this florida and southern california and asia and many many places around the world where they have lovely bright sunshine and warm conditions and they get humidity these plants thrive amazingly so this was just a quick video about my lovely new plant here my Vresia splendens so for people like me living here in Sweden this is a lovely tropical plant to add to our house plant collections absolutely gorgeous and amazing so I hope any of you that have the opportunity to get yourself a bromeliad go out and find yourself a bargain i only paid 169 swedish kroners for this beautiful plant here or i should say these three beautiful plants in one pot together so all i have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching gardens and crystals with me wesley peterson please remember to like subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.